proof all this time that we've been waiting. Lucifer is a woman? Lucifer and Jesus the same? And it's a woman on top of that? What kind of foolishness is this for y'all to stand there and lie to us this whole time and you've been knowing the truth? You got people thinking Satan and Lucifer the same person, right? Satan and Lucifer the same person. Lucifer is Venus. Bright morning star is Venus. The same in Revelations as it is in Isaiah. The bright morning star is Venus. And she comes up right before the sunrise. Notice, right before who rise? The sun. Y'all don't pay no attention. I ain't the one to talk, so you ain't heard it from me. All right? So I'm going to look and see if anybody got any questions before I push any further, because I don't want to overload y'all circuits too fast with this, because I know a lot of this stuff going to sound... Um, For sure, Christ. Um, yeah. DNA here and respond to what we say. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, while we looking at the DNA, all right, now the DNA showing us the cause of the conflict. Because you got two rays of light that's not compatible under normal circumstances. What do you mean two rays of light? When you look at Thoth and you look at the caduceus and you see the two serpents on the caduceus, and the same as a medical symbol, so you don't have fire. Um, it's not the science that cover it up, it's the scientists. The science ain't going to lie to you. It's the scientist that's going to lie to you. It's the one that's being told by the church to lie to you that's going to lie to you. It's not It's not the science. It's the scientist. The science is only going to, uh, it's like a computer. It's only guy go, garbage in, garbage out. You know, if you put the truth in, you're going to get the truth out. If you ask a, dece a deceptive question, you're going to get a deceptive answer. It's just the way the computer works. It doesn't mean anything by it. So don't take it personal, but that's what it's going to do. Okay, so now when we realize that there's two serpents, and normally they'll be their gold and silver, they'll be red and black, and sometimes they'll be red and green or red and yellow. But two lights I'm talking about is the amber red light and the emerald green light. They enter the body in two different locations now when they become in harmony it look like they're flowing like this so when you see the girls over in india doing dances with their hands and they moving it's an energy field they're moving around their body and the energy stems from the palm chakras and it creates a ball in tai chi but in India, they do something different with it. The ladies use it. They circle the energy around their hands, run it through their bodies, back up to the top of their head, to the sole of their feet, in the Mother Earth, gain more energy and get more deeper into the rhythm of the Earth to produce the dance effect. They're not really dancing like we do at the club because the energy of the Earth is shooting through them and moving them. And the movements that you're seeing that looks sudden and jerky. It's all it is is the end of the current. When the current end, that switch to another current and it make them look jerky. So Mother Earth can talk to women on a level that will blow y'all mind if y'all understood it. And one of these days, I'm gonna get a farm and I'm gonna start teaching them how to do it because I'm tired of looking at all this misery and don't nobody wanna do nothing about it but me. So <clears throat> the next thing that you got to go through to find this, what happened to the fallen ones, you go down. Now, we already got a Genesis with Eve and the serpent. We have something in the blood that ain't kosher, that's conflicting. And I walked you through how it was two opposing rays of light. These two opposing rays of light causes a psychological disruption. 
And this is what they call your good and your bad conscience or your good self and your bad self, your higher self and your lower self. Both paths, both paths can be used to attain what they call enlightenment or higher wisdom. Both paths. You can go either one of them. It's because creator source is indifferent. Source is indifferent. And what we even see is is pleasure and pain is just variance. You know, it's just variance. If we don't want it, it's pain. If we really, really want it, it's pleasure. And the more we want it and the more we move toward it, the more pleasure we feel in gaining it, we get to a point they call bliss. The point you're not even no longer aware of the three-dimensional reality. You are in a whole nother realm, but this is absolute pleasure. But then you can go the other route. You can resist all of the games, resist all of the foolishness, and it creates a, a friction in your existence. Because you're going against the grain, it's going to create friction. You're not going to never um, not have friction going against the grain. Anytime you go against the grain, it's going to be friction. You're going to experience in your real-time life the struggle. But when you have a higher evolved purpose, then you have a higher threshold for the ability to absorb and assimilate the struggle and make something positive from it, right? So now, either way, you can get so much pain built up, it can only last for so long, and then you are automatically so strong that there's not enough pain left to make you oppressed. And they call that enlightenment on the left-hand path. Now, <clears throat> to give you examples, we have enlightenment Crowley style, left-hand paths, Sean Puffy Combs, Jay-Z, following the Thelema. Then you have enlightenment of the right-hand path. You have those who um, worship the goddess Kali, living in Kali, of the right-hand path, who practice trying to follow the codes of righteousness to salvation and liberation, you know, like your Tupac and Easy e even though they look on the surface to be um, pariahs of society that they want all of us to look like, what Pac called a thug, um, some of us call them gangbangers, thug niggas, real niggas, G's, OG's, YG's, BG's, you know, the brothers. Um, but trying to follow the code of righteousness, some people don't understand what that means. And so then you have your churches misleading people, telling them that righteousness means that you can't do this and you don't do that. And you can't do this and you don't do that. Righteousness don't work like that. A righteous man walked through his life and he fall down. He make a mistake. He error because he's still human. Right? When he error, what does he do? At the onset of recognition of the error, he take the necessary steps to clean it up and make amends for his wrong. Sometimes he's not going to be able to do that, in which case he only have left to forgive himself until such times he forgive those he transgressed against. This is the purpose of the Lord's Prayer. It's showing you the path. That's why they say, how should we pray? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. First of all, the prayer is all wrong when it said our Father. Because the original was the Hail Mary, which was our mother who art in heaven, hallowed be her name. Her kingdom come, her will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And they changed the gender because they didn't change the entirety of the story. They can change the gender. They can change the name. As long as the star part, the three stars, the three wise men, the Orianos, you got to be in there. And um, 
the lady that greets the three wise men, what they call it in the book Mary, which is the Sphinx, which represents the female Leo laying and waiting for the sun to return at rest. That's why the Sphinx is at rest in Egypt by the Great Pyramid. She's at rest because she was waiting. She was waiting for 2019. That was what she was waiting on. Anyway, so um, those things had to be present. And then they can change the gender. They can tell you to look at the story in a different way. Let me think about this. The Bible fit together like a perfect tapestry of information. So they mean that they had to sync them because they did not all come from the same source. Meaning that all of the books in the Bible are not Jewish doctrine and origin. It's not the Hebrew doctrine. Some of it is Egyptian. Some of it is Greek. Some of it is Roman. But they got it all to mesh and made one of the most perfect books you ever read because you got the art of war in there. You got the art of sex in there. Um, you got the art of love in there. You got the art of hate. Um, you have... Um, business strategy in there you have um it's so much stuff in the book now we those who they tried to lie to us and told us we were slaves but slavery didn't exist we never accepted the religion christianity is what people not understanding until the last like 75 years martin luther king really made us accept christianity as a religion and a religious doctrine with the marches even the AME Church of the early 1900s, which was the largest black organization in church in this country, even probably to this day, because there's probably some that don't even call because they do that um, in order to have a different following and congregation and a, a different approach. But even they knew that we concealed the African conjure under the religion of Christianity. When Massa found out, we the uh, uh, the conjure was identified in the Catholicism as the Voodoo, the Santeri, and the Hoodoo, but under the traditional Protestant Christianity, they couldn't tell where it was at. Now, it was easy to tell the Catholic because they had too many tales that was from the African religion in the Catholic when they created the voodoo and the Santeria. Like um, the heavy usage of the chicken feather. They don't do that in the Catholic church. So the slave master automatically knew. He wasn't really a slave prison driver. He was a corrections officer. This is what y'all got to understand. We were never, African Americans never existed and there was never an African American slave. We were Amur Inca, and we were prisoners of war. And we got caught in a war that didn't have nothing to do with us, that somebody else brought over to us over here. And once we were under attack over here, and they felt that we were vulnerable, then they attacked the Afar Inca, which you call Africa today. And um, over there, they didn't call it a Far Inca. They call it uh, uh, Ifra, I-F-R-A, Amexum. But it's the same term, two different languages. We go over here, we knew about them. We call that a Far Inca. We call this a Moor Inca. And that's why they call it America, because they want to try to deceive the genetic memory. But it ain't going to work, because one of us, the baddest motherfucker ever born. I don't know which one of us it is right now because apparently a lot of us don't. But when we figure out who this one motherfucker is, that's the baddest motherfucker ever born, they can't trick him. Even when they think he's deceived, he not tricked. Okay? So now, this is just from historical and genome at this point. So now we're still looking for those fallen ones. Now, I already told you that, that we had to already start with the anomaly in the blood, in the DNA. Now we got to pass that part. Now it's no longer energetically and it's no longer just in the blood. And now in Genesis 6, it manifests in people. 
Then you got men of renown, men of valor. And the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. That mean they was beautiful. It don't mean they was white. Don't mean they was light. It don't mean they was black. Don't mean they was dark. It just mean they was beautiful, period. Then there's no distinction of ethnicity in the, at this particular point. It just said that the sons of God saw the daughters of men was beautiful, and then they took all they wanted for their wives. That mean they had harems. They took all they wanted for their wives, mean they had harems. Now, I keep that in mind because everybody is not under the same rules on this planet. So people being held to be accountable for the rules of the mortals when they immortals and they don't even operate from the same kit. The tool kits is different. One of them is using the plumber's tool kit. The other one is using the uh, astrologer's tool kit or an astronaut tool kit. They're not even working out the same kit, so they don't have the same restrictions and boundaries. But before I even get into any of that, we got to get back to this. So now you got... What made these men? They don't never tell us. Men of renown and men of valor. And if they were so renowned and they had so much valor, what? Who are they? Where they at? What's their names? Cause renown means to be renowned over the ages. Renown. I mean, you did something so out cold, they can't forget about it. Whatever it was, you did something so great, it can't be forgotten. So this is your men of renown. Men of valor mean they was brave, confident, sure of themselves. Um, valor meaning one who comes back from war in victory with his hands held high. And so where the hell are they? What happened to them? Why we don't have their names or do we? So you hear hero stories all over the world. That would classify as men of valor. And we still talk about them thousands of years later, even when they go back before the biblical text. That would be renown. So the only place you can find men of valor and men of renown in the history books that predate your biblical story that you can apply this to would be what they call your titans, your gods, your Nataru of Egypt, and your Anunnaki of Babylon and uh, in Syria in that area. Now, those are the only men whose names are still discussed. Like, just think about it. Now, we talk about God, but don't nobody tell you what God look like. How tall is God? Um, how fat? How much do God weigh? Um, do God even have a weight? Do God even fit in something that's is that you can weigh? Um, how big is God? How strong is he? Like, how, how much weight can he pick up at one time? Like, seriously, like God, can he like squat like 750? We talking God because, you know, the books say God a man. So if this God is creating, right? You keep that in mind. And you got all of these guys before this biblical God. You got your men of renown from all of those countries of old and you had this God character. Now, who is this God? Where did he come from? And how long he been here? Um, was he here before time was created? Or did he come after the time was created to create space? Or maybe he created the space while he was in the time. Or did he create the time while he was in the space? Or did he use the space to create time? Or did he use the time to create space? So um, we can't fit all this into our brain, so to speak, because science tells us to look at it one way religion or what they call theology says another way in common sense that they both some damn fools when you add that shit up because it don't match it got to be a synthesis it got to be a synthesis so now when we get into genesis 6 men are renowned men of valor we can find people around the world 
that we classify as those men of renown, men of valor, that would predate your Bible, which would give that some substantial um, verification. The only question is, though, is, is where did they go, right? So when you look in um, 